comes up. Um, so I'll just get straight into it, really. Um, so we're still talking about marriage. Um, and one of the things I've learned over time about marriage is that the quality of marriage is determined by the quality of people in it. And I learned this lesson kind of the hard way. Um, I was, when I was much younger, my mom told me to go and fry egg. And that time I can lazy. Hey, I always had a novel in my hand. So I always look for the fast way to do everything. So she said, go and fry four eggs. So I went into the kitchen, carried one bowl. And the normal, proper, ordained way, you know there's an ordained way to fry egg. So fry egg is that you break it individually. And you pour, oh, people don't know. Uh uh. You break it individually before you pour it together to mix. So, because I had no time, I just broke the first three, put everything together. And God was still working for me. It was good. By the time I broke the fourth one, it was rotten. So, it's now what now happened was that it now spoiled the rest of the eggs. So, in other words, no matter how good you are, if you don't marry somebody else who is equally good, your marriage will be bad. Marriage is determined by the quality of people in the marriage. Marriage is not good or bad. Marriage takes the nature of the people in it. So when you hear people say things like, oh, marriage is bad, marriage is not bad. It's who they married. And no matter how good you are, if you don't marry someone who is equally good and who understands the principles of marriage, marriage will be bad. And even if you think that you can do it alone, let me tell you, marriage is too heavy for one person to carry. That's why we have a lot of bitter people on social media talking about men being scum and scam. Which one is it, men are scam or men are scum? So you hear people saying all those kind of things because they have made the wrong choices. So today I want to set a foundation for what Pastor Kings is going to teach, I hope. Um, I won't talk about the blind spots in when you're making choices in marriage basically blind spots are like areas where your view is obstructed and you learn that more when you learn how to drive okay you know that when you're driving there's an angle you will be if someone is coming from this side you may not see the person that's what causes most, most accidents because when people now when you see them when the accident happens and you say ah you didn't see the person say i didn't see and that's because most times the person is in their blind spots so what happens most times is that when people want to choose a partner in marriage, there are some things that cause you to have blind spots. I'll just mention three of them. Like I said, I don't have so much time. So the first one, if you are selfish, selfishness can be a blind spot. Okay? Um, let me start with Matthew 16, 25. If you can give me the CEV version. If you don't have it, I'll just kind of quote it. It says that if you try to save your life, you will destroy it if you try to save your life jesus was speaking and i know that he was he wasn't talking about marriage but the truth is that the principles of the word of god can be applied all through so when he said that if you try to save your life this particular version says you will destroy it i kept on thinking about it that if you make the choice of marriage from a selfish position or from a selfish point of view you are going to destroy your life because marriage in itself, by its very nature, was not created based on selfishness. God said it is not good for the man to be alone. He said, then I will make him a helper. I will make him someone to come and help him. By very nature of that decision, it was not a selfish decision. So marriage in itself is never about what you can get. It's always about what you can give. So if you make a choice of who to marry based on what the person can do for you, you'll be frustrated in marriage. You are most likely going to choose the wrong person. So I see a lot of people make those kind of decisions. Oh, I like this guy. He can sing. So every day when I wake up in the morning, he's going to sing to me. <laughs> or in fact, the most common one is you see a pastor. And I honestly, I didn't know this. I didn't know this. Until later, I didn't know that people really wanted to marry pastor. I didn't know it was a thing. That's you see pastor like this. And you say you want to marry pastor. I didn't know. Because I always, when I see pastor, I'm thinking of the work involved in his life. And the sacrifices we make. But a lot of people think that our oh, pastor will just be preaching to me. He'll be doing personal Bible study with me. He'll be praying for me. He will, every day, I'll be here... <laughs> 
Pastor Chaco, let me not say anything. <laughs> pastor is looking for who we pray for him to. You, you are not praying for Pastor. Pastor's wife must pray for Pastor. Pastor is looking for who we gist with him, who we play with him. Pastor does not want to read Bible 24 hours. I don't want to bust your bubble. Because I, th- I know some of you think that Pastor does not eat. That he just, he just, the Holy Spirit fills him. <laughs> and that he doesn't walk, he just floats. So as to just come out, Pastor Chaco would just, he would send into her spirit, deep, colletto deep, the things he wants her to know. <laughs> so people now pick based on that. That, ah, this pastor, I will give, you, give me a platform. You now get home and realize that. No. Pastor gets angry when he's hungry. <laughs> then you realize oh my god pastor can be impatient wow sometimes pastor doesn't know what to do god all of a sudden the human being is not what you are stuck with meanwhile it's the spirit being you married (laughs) so do you see where the problems are starting from so if you make a choice based on selfishness which is a wrong reason you will most likely have chosen the wrong person if you choose a partner for the wrong reasons, you have most likely chosen the wrong person. So the mistake a lot of people make, and that is, you know, if you're thinking of only yourself, it won't help you see clearly to realize what will be required of you in marriage. When you're thinking of only yourself, you're not thinking of what you're going to give in the marriage. And marriage is about giving. You, or God, you will give leadership. That one is a giving. You will give leadership. And she, she will give help. So you are bringing something and bringing something. So my bringing jam, you're bringing, and then that's where happiness comes from. But if you think you're just going to relax, or he's just going to be leading me, who will not help him? He will give love. You will give honor. Because everybody has a role they must play in marriage. Because everybody has needs in marriage. So if you come thinking about, oh, what only you can get, I guarantee you that you would have already made a wrong choice. So the first thing you must do when picking a life partner is make sure you take selfishness out of the equation. If you take selfishness out of the equation, if you take away what the person can do for you, and you think about what you can do, what you bring to the table in the person's life, then you'll make a right choice. So that's the first blind spot. Second one, and the most common one, sex. Ah. Once sex enters the equation like this, people do not really used to see again or hear. All of a sudden, everything shuts down. You see, sex is so powerful. And that's the real reason why it's not that God wants to be wicked. It's, that, it's not that God does not... Ah, say God, say God does not feel the things we are feeling like this. It's not that God does not understand. He's the one that made sex in the first place. He's the one that created it. Did you know that you needed sex? When they gave it to you, did you know? You didn't know now. He's the one that said, ah, these people... It's not good for them just running around like this. And if I say that, they should just... <laughs> and if I say that, they should just be having children, they will say, which can I work with this one? So let me make it enjoyable. God planned everything. And now put it in, in your body. Now you will not think that God is wicked. He has a plan. But he understands that sex is so powerful that it has to be contained. That's why he says, only do it in marriage. And when you are married, only do it with your partner. Because when I say only do it in marriage, some people say, well, I'm married, I'll not be doing it. (laughs) Only do it with your partner. Because once sex enters, people stop thinking. Look through the Bible. I mean, we'll come into real life, but look through the Bible. Once sex was involved, something not here again. I mean, how does somebody tell you like this that i want to kill you the person did first attempt do you understand it's not that they gisted him the woman tried to kill you the first time he said the <laughs> the soldiers are here oh. he stood up yeah. <laughs> i thought maybe something has resurrected <laughs> And he said, let me just push this thing one last time. But Jesus, senior up. <laughs> Praise God. So, 
Samson kept on going back to that woman. Why? The power of sex. How can someone? I'm telling you, this was not film trick. Oh, this no. He was not watching video. This is that he was there. The woman said, "He said, if you tie me with this thing, give you my power will go." She tied him. It's like you are saying, if you give me apple, if I eat it, I will die. Then somebody gives you apple and you eat it, and then you stand up and say, "What did you give me to eat?" The person says, "Apple." Now, is that person not wicked? And he still went back there again, not once, not two times. I need to understand when sex is involved people's minds shut down look at david now king david though that all the love song in the world in the bible is him that wrote it how his heart is so pants after the lord this one down all kinds of things that you think that this one he cannot do any wrong in his life he saw a naked woman and his mind shut down his mind shut down so much that he did not even think number one this one i'm king this can destroy my reputation he did not think number two if i sleep with this woman she's a married woman her husband may hear he did not think number three that if i sleep with this woman she can get pregnant he didn't think at all sex one small thing and you see the problem with that thing is that it never ends there because he had sex with her then he had to now try to start covering things then he became a murderer and he just went down from there one decision would have saved his life just one decision of saying no so that he could see clearly most times when people start having sex there's nothing more in the relationship because you have taken away intimacy you've rushed it all so the person's not your friend you don't talk to the person you're just once you start sleeping with somebody every time you see the person what you are thinking about is how to sleep with the person it's never all of the form like not you know what she talking about we're all like really very holy in this church holy hill <laughs> yeah what we know <laughs> sex has a way that it totally shuts down a person's mind i've seen young girls in very bad relationships the guy is beating them he's cheating on them doing everything and when you say this guy is not good for you. Can't you see it? They'll say, oh boy, he was my first love. By that, they mean he was the person that is virgin to me. So that in itself is the one reason why they want to stay there, even though they know everything. So if sex was not in the equation, don't you think the person would make better choices? If the person was not sleeping, or they tell you things like, oh, after all the investments I've made, I say, wait, wait. <laughs> which, which land you buy? <laughs> What they mean by an investment is how much sex they've had with that person. That's basically what they're saying. So sex has a way that it keeps you from thinking. It rushes everything. You, you're, no longer, you're no longer talking about the important things. And that's why I love this thing that Pastor Bimbo of Blessed Memory used to say. She said the courtship period is not for intercourse. It's for interview. But once intercourse enters the picture, interview ends. Nobody's asking question again. So what's your favorite food? When I'm when I can tear your clothes. Favorite food. So when God says no premarital sex, it's not because he's wicked. It's because when sex is not involved, you make smarter decisions because you see clearer. At that point, because there's no sex, there's nothing connecting. And you know, sex is not just physical. The Bible says it's not just skin on skin. When you, he says he that is joined with the harlot is one with the harlot. You actually become one person with that person. So it's harder. There, you know, you're now tied. So it's harder for you to be able to pull away. Once sex is involved, it's harder for people to break up. I mean, marriage counselor, so I know. You will see that everything is wrong in the relationship. And you're telling them, end this thing. They will say, ah, but I love, it's not I love them, it's I love the sex we're having. And let me tell you, it's better not to smell what you won't eat. If you know that you don't want to eat something, don't smell it. So don't say, let's just kiss. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the lie of Satan. You don't know Satan. Satan will tell you, just kiss more. Don't, don't even kiss, kiss. Just peck here. Then you are just pecking. Do you understand? And as of course, as you are pecking, maybe she just turned one kind. You now came here. There is someone you do not know. 
you now your hand because I mean <laughs> if I saw Ked always says this one he says when you are kissing do you do like this will your hand not find the expression and then Satan will just tell you is it not just kiss what's this I kiss you are kissing neck now just kiss her neck as you are kissing the neck uh -uh, you can't really see the neck well so just losing two buttons it's just two buttons that's Satan Satan will never tell you from the beginning come and destroy your life he never does that he will start bit by bit he didn't come to you and say come and eat the fruit so that you will the, you people will die he didn't say that he just started having a conversation with her ah it's fine girl come she said me uh -uh, how many of you did this garden now come now make come she came once where your husband i don't know he's with animals <laughs> and i say eh. so come is it true that god said you people should not eat apple we should not eat fruit yeah he said we should not even touch it we don't even look at it he said ah uh -uh. god is so mau he's he has mind though see this kind of fine fruit that he put here he said you should not look at it you should not touch it he's a lie touch it nothing will happen she said just put you're almost there just put your hand she put her hand so you just pluck it she pluck her or you just smell it she smell her or you just lick it <laughs> i just say bite it or just lick it after all, you have not eaten it licking something is eating that's what satan does small 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 before you know you don't get belly so once sex enters dynamics change you can't see clearly anymore you can't hear clearly anymore and let me tell you, you can never be wiser than god when god tells you something stay away from it i know people let me tell you ah there's one of my dear daughters she was in her final year in uni and all her roommates were putting pressure on her how can you not have ah, you want to graduate you still be a virgin ah, ah, and you are not ashamed let me tell you see satan is so you know you know you just understand that it's a war of kingdoms satan's agenda is so strong out there so they are making those of us doing the right thing ashamed of speaking the truth and standing for what is right so they put pressure on this girl that can you say you are a virgin ah uh -uh. she now finally decided she sleep with her boyfriend she planned valentine's day everything had sex with him a couple of months after she was sick found out she had hiv and she said she used condom she said she used condom but condoms break don't they it's not man-made anything man-made can fail so when bible says avoid premarital sex run flee run flee final thing final thing that can be a blind spot not picking from your spirit and i don't say this because i feel like in this day and age a lot of people are so focused on telling you is it if you are compatible if your personalities are like this if the, let me tell you eh, somebody can look good can tick all the boxes but the person may just not be the right person and the only way you can know is if you tap into your spirit that's the only way you can know for sure someone can be everything you ever dreamed all the list that you've written he must be tall dark handsome even though i don't know who will now marry short yellow ugly he will be all those things he must have money he must be a worker in church he be, but he's not the one god planned for you but how will you know if you don't tap into your spirit how will you know if you don't check so these days everyone makes it seem as if he must be this just check the boxes let me tell you you must still pray and the reason why you must still pray is because you are not like everyone out there in case you don't know you don't have a spirit you are a spirit because a lot of times that's what we think oh, you have it no you are a spirit that is the most that's your essence you are a spirit you have a soul you live in a body but your essence is that you're a spirit man and that means that you have the very nature of god that's what makes you like god do you think god can never be stranded if god cannot be stranded why is because he's a spirit and you see marriage is also a spiritual thing marriage is more spiritual than it is physical if god created marriage and god is a spirit and marriage came from god that means it's spiritual so you cannot use your 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 flesh to make a spiritual decision marriage is not about we like each other we love each other marriage is about destiny marriage is about destiny is this the kind of person i want to spend the rest of my life fulfilling destiny with is this the kind of person i want to reproduce his kind 
Because when you are marrying someone, you are not just choosing a spouse. You are choosing a parent for your children. And a lot of times, we will not think about that. So even the Bible tells you that beauty is vain, charm is deceitful. He said, but it is a woman who fears the Lord. That's the woman you should go after. How will you know a woman that fears the Lord if you don't fear the Lord? So you must still dig from your spirit. It must still come from your spirit. Listen, if you sow to, see, if you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption. No? If you, every time you want to make a decision, you do it from your flesh. Oh, this guy looks good. Mm, I think he can pay my bills. He can. When you enter that marriage, you will see dimensions you never thought about. So as a Christian, don't get carried away by what the world is doing. You must do things God's way. After you, I mean, we laugh about it now, but those days, you don't marry somebody you have not received. Yes. You must still bring the God factor because it's God that still ends up doing It's God that still ends up blessing that marriage and that union. And God will not bless what he did not put together. So from today, after you have checked all the boxes, take time out and pray. I miss the days of praying Christians. I don't know. These days now, people are praying, Father, do, Father, do. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Listen, how about communion with God? Have conversations with him and say, this person, he be like, say, fine, but God, he, how is he inside? Because it's God that sees the heart. God does not see the way you are seeing. You are focused on the outside. God says, it's the heart I'm looking at. So the person may be everything, but what is his heart like? So when it comes to marriage, don't make it a natural decision. Don't say, I'm a fine girl. See her childbearing hips. Wow. <laughs> she can have childbearing hips. I have no ovaries. You can't know. So in the end, you must still take time out and pray. It's not something you should take lightly at all. Who you are going to go the journey of life with is so vital. The person you marry has the ability to change the rest of your life. Were you blessed this evening?